Hey, hey, YouTubers. Welcome back to Silvo Shop. Working on the 49 Chevy. Got pretty much the rear end done. Now it's time for the front end. I'm gonna put a new uh, IFS suspension, bolt on suspension from Speedway Motors. I'm gonna walk you through it as best as I can. And after I get that done, I'm going to uh, clean up the firewall and clean up all the wiring, that kind of thing. It's not in bad shape, but just gonna maybe hide some more wires, that kind of thing. Pulled the engine, 327, moderate cam, and I'm running a uh, electronic fuel injection on it, so it starts right up. Um, got about 400, 410 horse out of that. So let me show you this. This is the project. When you order from Speedway Motors, this is what you get for an IFS, independent front suspension. I've looked all over the place for videos on how to install this, and I've seen it installed, but just not on an old Chevy. So this is, you know, rudimentary what it's gonna look like once it's installed. I went ahead and got a, a uh, radiator mount so I'm going to replace the original. Also got the power steering option rack and pinion. Um, comes with uh, the disc brakes, um, calipers, shocks, uh, coilover springs, everything you need to get this job done. I also did get a sway bar as well, just for extra stability on the front end. Comes with a set of directions. They're pretty self-explanatory, really, but again, I haven't found any videos to go over it. So, hopefully this video will help you. If you like it, subscribe, like, and uh, follow my progress. Um, the first step, per the instructions, is to cut off this part of that front radiator mount and cut off these uh, wings, if you will, on the frame. That's going to give the clearance to the rack and pinion going forward, or going back and forth, and also the cross member that's going to go in place. So that you see what they're talking about. This is the original radiator mount. So per the instructions, they want you to cut basically this back part out of it, keeping these two bolts on each side in, intact for clearance. And then you'll see here, these little wings, they're uh, calling for you to call out, uh, to cut out as well. Now I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna cut out the wings, but I'm not going to cut out what it says here because I've got the new radiator mount that I bought from Speedway Motors. It's a hundred bucks and bolt in. Uh, once I get everything bolted in, I, I'm probably will have everything tack welded in as well just for added security and safety but for now I'm going to get it all bolted up mocked up and then we'll go from there so accomplished to accomplish the cutouts of that radiator I'm going to I'm going to just show you what I would use if I was because I got to cut those wings out anyway um, you can use an air pneumatic uh, cutting tool you can use an electrical one with a cutting wheel. Always wear safety. Um, I wear a safety mask just so it covers my whole face, so all the sparks and all. Um, also, just from past experience, I know it's quite a far away from where I'm going to be grinding and cutting, but make sure you cover any wind windows, windshields, that kind of thing. It will etch your windows if the sparks fly on your windshield. Again, uh, not on this project, but previous project, it has happened to me. So, uh, watch out for that. All right, so I marked and cut off one of the wings using electrical die grinder, um, angle grinder. It, I like electrical tools. I mean, I like pneumatic tools too, but my big compressor is down right now, so I'm using electric um, constant power. So, basically, that's what it'll look like. One side you got, one side you don't. Um, how I marked it was I just took a, a pencil 
and I ran it um, along the edge of the frame on the top level with the frame just to kind of mark and score where I wanted to cut and I went back and cut it out. Okay, so here is the second side or the other side and as you can see here and here there are no more wings. The more I got to thinking about this, again, they want you to cut this back part off, keep the front part, um, and I've got the new one that I've showed you. The more I'm thinking about this, I might cut this out in the back and keep this intact, and then go ahead and put the cross member in and have it bolted down prior to removing this to install the new one. Just because I don't, there's probably ways of doing it, I'm sure, um, but I don't want to lose the integrity of the width and everything up here of the original frame. And so it may work out if I take it all out and just put the, you know, new radiator um, uh, brace in and then the cross member. I'm just doing it methodically here. So I want to go ahead and probably cut this out per the instructions. So at least you'll see what that looks like. And then I'll uh, assemble the, um, the cross member. And then later I'll take this out and add the radiator support. Okay, so here we are. Cut the cross member out, half of it, the back end of it, per the instructions. And I also cut out the wings. I'm gonna be, I'm not gonna lie to you. I took that, a saber saw to you know, go across the seam much easier, much faster. But uh, to get these off this way and this way uh, is a pain. I'll just be honest with you. Anyway, um, on to the next step. Continuing on here. So the next step in the instruction says measure an 18th and an 8th. And also the diagram shows... 20 and a half from the end and from the center of the axle um, leaf springs joint. So I measured from here to here, and you'll see my score here, that's 20 and a half. I also checked it with the hole, the leaf spring hole, and it's 18th and an eighth. I mean, it's right on it. Did the same thing for the other side. And you see my score there. Again, both from the leaf spring hole and from the end of the frame. I uh, The instructions say to um, put a straight edge on the top and score uh, basically the lines here and here here and here and that will be my my axle line okay so um scratch the uh having to mark on top of the frame like i did with a straight edge so what you'll see the instructions didn't say that so i don't really need that but anyway it does help you know the cause and you can see that you know it's straight down the way there but anyway, you need these marks on the end of the frame here so that you can line up the cross member in the center here for the instructions. So this is the this is step six where you would slide the cross member into the cross rails, which I'll do here in a minute, or to the frame rails, and then uh, line up your center of the cross member to the mark that I just made on the frame. I'll do that in a minute. So you see that I marked the center of the post of the cross member here. Uh, it ended up being three and a quarter inches. It's six and a half inches at the bottom. So three and a quarter is the middle. Once I found the middle, since it was tough to get like a, a straight angle, I took a straight edge like so, and yes, my bench is, is level and square. 
I did that and scored lines on both this end and that end. Okay, so here we are. Sorry about the stop and starting, but uh, I'm doing this by myself, so I don't have anybody to hold the camera um, or position this. But anyway, so it says to line up the two scores, which I did, as you see there, and clamp it in place. It says also to make sure that the the uh, the plate is fully flush along the uh, bottom side of the frame. So here's the other side. And again, lined up the scores, making sure I'm flush, and clamping it down. Said to drill the holes out after I got it clamped. I did that with a 25 64 inch bit on both sides. And it says to temporarily bolt them in, which is really cool because this kit comes with um, setup nuts is what they're calling them. So you're not using your, your lock nuts, you're using the actual setup nuts to set everything up. And then once you take everything back off and you want to permanently put it in place after you get all the drills, your holes drilled and such, then you put the lock washer or lock nuts on, which is pretty nice, uh, nice to have. So that takes care of step six. Step seven is to go underneath and drill out the two bottom holes using the same bit, a 25 64 inch bit. Here we go. Okay, so uh, I'm not gonna lie, that was a pain. But <clears throat> all four are now drilled out and set up with the bolts and the setup nuts. Um, make sure you have uh, make sure you have decent sharp bits. I end up using a step bit for some. Got another step bit over there and then the 25 64th inch drill bit.